Hi, my name is Sam Hobson, and I am giving a presentation on the life and achievements of Francis Harry Compton Crick, the discoverer of the double helix and the father of molecular biology. Francis Crick was born on June 8, 1916, to Harry Crick and Annie Elizabeth Wilkins in Northampton, England, where he also grew up. He was the oldest of two children. He had a younger brother named Anthony Crick from the same parents. As a young child, Francis attended Northampton Grammar School, shown below, and as a teenager, attended the Mill Hill Boarding School in London, England, shown above. After high school, Francis attended the University of London, shown below, for his undergrad, and he got his Bachelor's of Science in Physics in 1939. He went to Cambridge for his PhD, but was interrupted by World War II. He then went back and got it in 1947. France married Ruth Doreen Dodd from 1940 to 1947. They had one son named Michael F.C. Crick. He married again to Oddly Speed in 1947 and had a daughter Gabrielle Crick and Jacqueline Crick. His colleague J.D. Watson helped him find the double helix structure of DNA. And I'll touch more about that in a little bit. Also, Franklin produced the X-ray Crick and Watson used and Linus Pauling produced two models that were referenced in Watson and Crick's work. In 1953, Watson and Crick discovered the double helix structure of DNA. This took them 18 months and a lot of work. But how did they do it? I'll give you a rundown on what the process they went through to find the double helix structure of DNA. The experiment done by Watson and Crick wasn't an experiment at all. It was in fact an observational study of subjects in science along with the work of contemporaries to produce a model of what DNA looks like. Crick and Watson studied many subjects like genetics, biochemistry, chemistry, physical chemistry, and x-ray crystallography. Crick had to do this long research because he lacked knowledge in biology, organic chemistry, or x-ray crystallography. They looked at the work of the three people pictured from left to right, Linus Pauling, Miles and Franklin, and Maurice Wilkin, who in Pauling's case had already suggested two possible structures of DNA, along with Franklin and Wilkins, who had a photograph of DNA. Pictured is the alpha helix structure proposed by Linus Pauling, Robert Corey, and Herman Branson. This model was very close to DNA, but minor details made it unable to be DNA in its primary form. But the alpha helix is very close to the secondary form of DNA is actually a common shape taken by amino acids. Pictured is the triple helix structure, both by Linus Pauling, six months before Watson and Crick finalized theirs. The model was based off three strands of unionized phosphate groups holding it all together. The problem was the phosphate groups had hydrogens on them, then DNA still could not be a, uh, an acid. This is a photo done by Rosalind Franklin during her work with Maurice Wilkins. This was the main thing Crick and Watson looked at to extrapolate the structure of DNA. The use of Franklin's work for this double helix has been a contentious issue for a very long time, and I will touch on that in a later slide. This was the final model by Francis Crick and James Watson. Neither were very adept at chemistry, so the original model had too many electrons on it, and it took them an additional six hours to get the perfect model we know today. In 1962, Maurice Wilkins, James Watson, and Francis Crick won the Nobel Prize for their work in discovery of the structure of DNA. Rosalind Franklin did not receive a prize for her work, and the reasoning was probably because she was a woman in a male-dominated field, and it would hurt a couple egos, so they cut her out. Crick was a firm believer in eugenics, which is the process of making a superior race. He was a believer in positive eugenics. He has never gone on record about it, but many wealthy people have received letters from him urging them to make more offspring. One of the huge impacts of the discovery has been the controversy over Franklin's role in the discovery. To this day, it is still a hot topic in the community. In his book, The Double Helix and Watson's 2011 TED Talk, they stated that there was no way that Rosalind Franklin could interpret her own work. The discovery led to a higher understanding of DNA and its replication, which eventually led to the use of PCR, which could amplify a target sequence of DNA. This revolutionized forensic science industry and made finding culprits far easier, along with exonerating people who had been wrongly convicted. On November 9, 2016, 
the Queen and Duke of Edinburgh opened the Crick Institute in London. This was 12, 12 years after Crick's death. The Institute is a biomedical discovery institute trying to understand why diseases develop and diagnose and treat diseases like cancer. On July 28, 2004, Francis Crick passed away in San Diego. He had revolutionized medicine and forensic science, all with the model he made, started far more arguments than he could ever fathom, and paved the way for far greater discoveries in the field. He was a true pioneer, and the world wouldn't be the same without him.